us and Pete. You guys have fun. Okay. Hi. Hi. John, John MacArthur. I'm Travis. Travis, nice to meet you. Pete, good to see you again. Yeah, it's been you a long time. Yeah, it has been. Uh, welcome, you guys know each other? welcome to the queue. Well, it's, you know, from way back. From way back, yeah. It's way my back. friend, uh, Mr. Valente, coming in. Mr. Valente he? will be here uh, tomorrow morning. He's okay. on our red eye right now. He's out at a, he's a, he's at a, at a, another event um, in, in Las Vegas, and he's going to fly in on the red eye. Uh, and be here tomorrow morning. Great. So yeah, Excellent. you. So he'll. I'm sure he'll want to hook up with you. Yeah, he he sent me a tweet or. A he he he's posting you. Okay. okay. All right. And and, and uh, so tell me what you're up to these days because you and I haven't talked in a little while. Sure. Um, well, I just took over. I'm the uh, general manager for our Ecologic um, organization. Yeah. So I'm in the process of moving up to Nashville, New Hampshire. Uh, all right, live back, free or die. A little bit, yeah, a little bit back to my roots, as you know. I That's spent right. a lot of time up in uh, Shrewsbury, Mass, with yeah. the old digital team. Right. Uh, prior to the uh, compact merger. Right. So. Right. Heading back up there. And yep. Travis uh, just recently moved up there as well. You're already live, up in New Hampshire? Yeah, live free or die. Okay. Yeah. 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 Real, good, good value for your real estate up there. Yeah, yeah. it's a beautiful <laughs> part of the country. It's a beautiful part, yeah. yeah. So and it's, and it's nice in January. It's, <laughs> yeah, this was actually a particularly difficult winter. Yeah. Um, we actually had to bring the dozer in to move the snow back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, w- I was up there, you know, during the winter a lot, and there was, uh, you know, seven-foot snow banks. Yes. It felt like an urban canyon driving through, you know, the streets of Boston. I have a, I have a picture outside my house, uh, 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 from outside my house with a basketball hoop and one car that we, we have parked outside, two cars are parked inside, one parked outside, and the snow on top of the car was at the height of the basketball hoop. So, yeah, goodness. Yes, that my was, goodness. that was, it was, but it's all melted now, so yeah, uh, yeah. it's good. It's beautiful now. So you guys are hiring uh, up in Nashua, yes, I yes, heard, we, are. I, we heard good. that from, from, from Darren, that, mm-hmm. uh, that you guys are looking to hire. Where are you, where, where are you hiring these days? So Actually, within storage, we're hiring everywhere. Um, but Nashua being one of the key sites we're hiring in. Sure. And uh, basically all skill sets, if you will. Yeah, okay. Mainly is, uh, I think Darren said we're about 90% software engineers, so obviously we're looking for people to work on the software products and a lot of the integration that we do with applications and such make yep. it even more important to get those skill sets. I mean, if you look at the hiring we've done in, in, in the Nashua um, Design Center since we've been there, we've more than doubled the size of the staff there. Uh-huh. Um, we actually were hiring so quickly that we had to go and look at other geographies right. so, so we could hire. You've got, you've got development in uh, Israel, you've got uh, California now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, our Silicon Valley Design Center. Okay. Uh, the Compellent team is up in, in Minneapolis. Right. Uh, and uh, Austin, Texas, the Austin Design okay. Center. And something in India too, I think? No, or is that somebody else? Uh, we have a, well, we have a little bit in India. It's connected with our Oak Arena acquisition yep. and right. Hyderabad. We have that's, a, a that's, small team there. Because, yeah, I think uh, Darren was talking about that or Phil was talking about mm-hmm. that this morning. So, mm-hmm. yeah. okay. So we're and, looking in all those areas. Yeah. Good. Well, we need jobs, so that's good. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. It's, it's nice to be hiring, you know, in it's, this environment. Yeah, right, right, yeah. right. So, uh, uh, tell me a little bit about the integration of some of the technologies and how you help the customers differentiate between. Uh, how are you driving innovation on the ecologic side? Uh, and, and how you sort of contrast that with what's going on on the compellent side. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Good. So one of, one of the big announcements we've had at this event is uh, the release of our uh, Equalogic FS7500, okay. which is adding file capability to the Equalogic product line. Okay. And, uh, so you, you actually announced that this morning? We or? did this morning, okay. yes. yes. And that's, that's the, um, that came out of the Exonet acquisition? That's correct. That's okay. exactly right. Great. That's exactly right. So uh, we did the Exonet acquisition about 18 months ago, right. roughly. Fe- February of yep. last year. February yep. of last year. And we've been working on the integration, you know, <laughs> very diligently yeah. for the last uh, for the last year plus, and we're bringing the product to market. And it's really, uh, I'm really excited about it because a lot of the customers, Equalogic customers and customers in general, have enormous uh, unstructured data growth. Right. And file um, capability helps them manage that unstructured growth. And it's not just any file capability; it's based on the Exonet IP, high performance, high end file system. Yeah. If uh, Exonet was pretty much a, a, a high performance kind of file system, right? So. Right. So, how far down are you taking that into your? I mean, is this is this it's for targeted the Equalogic customer set okay. today? Um, so, describe that Equalogic customer set to me. But, but maybe before go ahead. we go there, yeah. we've also released a product called the NX3500, which okay. also uses 
the Exponent file system on our Power Vault line. That's so, so the idea is, is to, to go do way it down. obviously on Power Vault, do it on Equal Logic, and, and if, you can imagine and, what we might yeah, be doing and, in the future. And eventually with it's going to be in Compel, right? right? Okay. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. And is that sort of how you tier them? You, you know, and I don't want to oversimplify too much, but you got Power Vault for the real for the S, mm-hmm. right? And then you got Equal Logic for the sort of mid of the. Low, low to mid of the mid range and 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 compelling for the no. mid range and upper is that sort of a differentiation? Yeah, that, is I that mean, too simple? Well, yeah, I mean it, it's ru- it's roughly correct. I mean, okay. I think each each product set is targeted at a unique, distinct customer need yeah. uh, in the in in the IT environments. Power vaults are, are customers that a lot of them are S, but even some larger customers who just need a little bit of external right. storage. Right. First, you know, they need good performance. They need you know basic capabilities, but first and foremost, they need for it to be affordable. Right. Um, so really targeted at that customer set. Equal Logic is is targeted at, at uh, what we like to call the uh, lean IT SaaS. Highly virtualized, fast-growing customer set, and there's a lot of those customers right. out there with virtualization coming on. I remember uh, a very large retailer in Massachusetts that's got a huge installation of Equalogic in there. I think uh, um, so, and, and they're very virtualized infrastructure. So yeah, um, fi- you know, if you look at typical Equalogic customer, 50, 60, 70 percent of their applications are, are virtualized. We were just talking with a customer right before we came here. 80 okay. percent of their applications are virtualized. Okay. So it's pretty common to be highly virtualized in an Equalogic environment. So they need dynamic store storage, adaptive storage, flexible storage. But first and foremost, they need for it to be very easy to manage because by and large, Equalogic customers have very lean IT staffs. All right. They were talking about having three people on the IT staffs managing 60 arrays, for example. In the old days, if you remember, we used to, I, we used I to use you know so many terabytes that an administrator could manage. Yeah, right? I, I actually I actually remember doing a white paper on that long long time ago about uh, you know we, we first what we first did was we centralized storage into Big Iron and and that gave some centralized management capabilities. Right, right? now you guys have figured out how to do centralized management. Even though you've got 70, 80 storage systems, right? that's right. That's right. So that's, right. that's a big change yeah, in the industry. We've come a long way. So yeah. Yes, we have. Absolutely. Still doing dispatch to fix disk drives and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we were talking earlier about uh, one of the customers we just had the conversation with asked me, you know, what was the first project to work on? It was a one gigabyte, five and a quarter inch drive in 1986, and we were selling them for ten thousand yeah. dollars per drive. So that kind of takes you back yeah, a little yeah, bit, yeah, puts yeah. it in perspective. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, I spent five million dollars for five terabytes or something like right. that. I forget. <laughs> yeah, wow. yeah. yeah. <laughs> we used to call it dollars per megabyte. Now you can't even <laughs> yeah. do that anymore. It, yeah, it's uh, pennies. Or, right. Yeah. Right. So it's good. It's good growth. Um, what What are we going to see the rest of the show today? You've got uh, of the rest of the week. You've got uh, uh, what's What's the focus? What are the big things to watch for in the in the show for the so, so the great thing about this show is that we get people from the actual product development group to come and educate customers. Uh, we have a ton of hands-on labs for our Ecologic customers, our Compellent customers, our PowerVault customers. Um, we have a hands-on lab for the new FS7500 that we announced today that people can go and, and touch. And, and these hands-on labs, you talk to a lot of people that come to these events, they almost in and of themselves make the event worthwhile. The ability to touch and, and look at the tools and see how they could use them in their environment uh, is, is, is very valuable to them. But in addition to that, we have a lot of uh, educational uh, um, sessions, um, best practices sessions, uh, uh, sharing information between customers. Yeah. Um, and you've got a lot of your partners here, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Correct. So, so a lot of education there. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, th- I think in general, you know, Dell are looking for open, capable, affordable systems, and part of that is is we're not going to go and try to do all the applications ourselves. So we're going to team with those people. You see the, you know, VMware, Symantec, and our other key partners here that we work with on an ongoing basis to make sure that we're bringing best of breed along with our storage solutions. And in addition to our ISV partners, we also have channel partners here. Um, so the the show started out with a, a channel partner specific day. Um, a lot of the same education that the end users like, the channel partners like, um, but uh, that's a that's an innovation for this show um, versus what we've done historically when it was the Equalogic user conference. Yeah. Um, bringing Compellent into the into the fold, uh, they had it uh, so you had cha- channel partners and end users at the show, and so we decided to adopt that model as well because the channel is a, a key part 
of, of us serving customers. Compellent was uh, 100% through the channel. Mm -hmm. As was Equalizer. As was Equalizer, yes. okay. That, and is that still true today, or is that how's that evolving? We have a, a dual model, uh, so mm -hmm. very, very friendly with the channel, but we also do have a large drink sales force. Okay, go on in. And obviously we're trying to strike the right balance there, because if we're going to yeah. grow, obviously we need our channel partners to be a big part of our growth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so I, I think one of, one of the things that I, that, I, that I like to focus on is, you know, where do you see Equalogic products evolving over the next 12, 24 months? You did the scalable file system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think. I think. Um, did, were you in the session this morning? Or no, no, no. We okay. were out. We were. We were broadcasting. Yeah, okay, live, so. broadcasting. Okay. I think if you look at our overall strategy, I think Equal Logic is going to be a big part of that overall strategy. So we're doing the integration of the technologies to start with. Started with the file system. Yeah. You know, we purchased Oak Arena. Right. We're, so you can imagine that we're taking that compression and dedupe data reduction technology and moving it into. You know, down in the file system, talking about primary storage, things like that. So you're going to see that continue to evolve, right? And we're also looking at across products. You know, we had a question this morning, for example, have you started thinking about compellent and using Equalogic and being able to move from an Equalogic box to a compellent box? So if you in had terms sort of, of data, the data center, data you know, the data. if compellent is your data center and Equalogic is your departmental, are you going to be right. able to move that? So those are the kind of things we're going to continue to look at, but we're also going to look at growing the equal logic, you know, you mentioned specifically equal logic. We're going to continue to grow the capability of equal logic. We're going to make it easier to use than it already is. Um, virtualization, that's been the center point. Easy right. to use virtualization for equal logic. We'll continue to do more of that. And one of the things, uh, as Travis was talking about, what are we doing here at the conference? One of the things is that we're getting very good feedback Absolutely. from our customers, yeah. and we really that's one of the things we take out of this conference more than anything is get that feedback and incorporate it into the products. As he said, we just met with a customer and he was happy because he's, he's actually on four beta programs with us as we speak right now, which means that he's getting to see the products early. He's that's giving great. us input yep. and we're making the changes uh, that, that yep. he's looking for. Yeah, and I really, I mean, I think it shows, uh, you know, the compelling philosophy, the Dell philosophy, the equal logic philosophy. All have merged into you know what what is now the Dell philosophy, the Dell philosophy. which is which is customers first, right? Customers in, and uh, the customer we were talking to was saying, hey, you know, we were we were running this beta program. I gave you feedback on something I wanted to uh, change. He's communi communicating directly with the development team. The next beta release, we had made that change for him, and he, he was remarking on yeah. you know he was, he was saying that's remarkable. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, the green was pretty hot there for a while, and a lot of focus on green initiatives. Um, you know, reducing the cost of operating, uh, the, the, the operating cost. We're talking power, sure. cooling, things like that. What, where does that sit today in Ecologic and and Compellent? And well, I think uh, a good example is Compellent. When you start talking about the tiering architecture, yep. you're automatically moving the data from more expensive, higher power, solid state yep. disks, SAS drives, yep. off to cheaper SATA. SATA drives. So that's one thing, for example. The other thing is, as we start looking at the dedupe technology, right. think about it, if you can dedupe the tech, dedupe the data, move it off to something else, and you just need less storage, all of a sudden you're just green by default. Yeah, yeah. And, and are you seeing customers asking more and more for that kind of technology, or is, it a, is this a push or a pull? They, they like the optimization, right? Okay. You know, and the great the it's great operational efficiency. Right. Well, you get the maximum performance out of your your environment with the minimal amount of, of spindles, which saves you money, but it also saves you power and cooling. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing a lot of customers, you know, go that way because of the economic benefits. Okay. Okay. I, I you know, you ask if it's a push or a pull. Yeah. I think it's a, a little bit of a neutral. You know, we're, we're moving there because the technology is taking us there and it's a benefit to the customers. Okay, that's right. So in the past where they may have asked for it because, oh, my data center is running out of space, my power bills are too high, right. we're starting to meet those needs in some, with some pretty neat technologies and therefore they don't have to ask for it because we're already doing some it's of that. It's just happening. Yeah, it's actually happening. back in the day when I bought five terabytes for five million bucks, one the big driver was we were out of space. You're and out of I space. need I needed yeah. and, and I need to squeeze smaller disk drives. Yeah, the other the thing space. is is you don't always need to raise floor environments for these um, Yeah, that's really gone well. away. Equal equal logic doesn't require raised floor, right? Nope. So 
Exactly. And we're actually doing some internal studies, thermal studies, and you know how far can we take that envelope? Because we know people are going to deploy these in areas that aren't raised floor environments. I guess I guess I'm dating myself because I don't even know what a raised floor is. Uh, uh. <laughs> Just kidding. Wow, wow. Okay. We, we, had, we has a lot to learn. <laughs> yeah. So Darren, joking. so Darren and, I, Darren and I were talking about do, do we remember our draft numbers? So <laughs> <laughs> that was before me. Okay, draft numbers were before you. Yeah, so okay, yeah. yeah so. Yeah, all right. So, yeah, because he was a fighter pilot. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was, he was. So, and, and, and what about, we've been through a number of disasters recently. We had the situation in Japan. We've had, you know, flooding. We've had you know, hurricanes. We've had earthquakes and things like that. Where does data protection fit into the strategy, and where are we going to see some innovations at the storage system level from Ecologic uh, for, for data protection? It's core, it's core to the strategy. I mean, when you're putting all of your data centralized, the protecting that d data uh, in the event of human error or natural disaster is imperative. And so with Equalogic um, and the all-inclusive software capability that comes with it, customers get replication technology with Equalogic uh, included in the price. And so that's actually one of the most popular uh, pieces of technology that customers use with Equalogic is replication technology for DR type scenarios. Is it doing campus replication? Are they doing uh, wide area to replication? And it's both. Yeah. It's both. So the dedupe will be a critical part of the wide. Uh, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Distance. Yes. Yeah, we, we're actually talking to customers where they're asking for a specific type where maybe they want to replicate on site and yep. then move the data off site. And you know that data that's offsite is not necessarily for operational every day, so you can maybe treat it a little bit different, right? You can dedupe it, move it off, keep it on cheaper storage, so yep. now all of a sudden you get a double benefit. You have a DR side, if you will, that you can bring back up, and you also are saving money. Right, right. I think that's that's certainly an area where we're seeing more and more more and more requirements. Well, I think uh, things like 9-11 happen, and, and those right. businesses, I, I forgot what the number percentage was, but I think it's 80, 90% of the businesses that get impacted by that never come back. Now, if you can find the source for that for that data, I've been looking for the source for that data. I've heard that data, but I haven't found the source I, for that data. I, 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 <laughs> we're all quoting the same right. data, uh, obviously. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. somebody must have it. Somebody's got it, yeah. 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 Anyway, but but I, it's clearly is a, is a big issue mm -hmm. you know, when, you, when you've lost data. And it's, well, let's face it, our business is our data in a lot of cases, it is. right? Yeah. Absolutely. You start talking about billing and that sort of thing, you know, what are you going to do without it? Right, right. So, um, any any other advice? Well, let's talk a little bit about. We were talking about um, uh, cloud earlier and how Dell is in 22 of the 25 largest cloud providers. Mm -hmm. um, is there a cloud strategy for Equalogic? I, I think it depends on how you de define. Cloud. So you define cloud, right. and then you can answer the question. <laughs> right. So so if if you're talking or about or tell me it's the wrong question. That's the right way to answer that. One. <laughs> if, if you're talking about a highly virtualized environment, yeah. uh, as, as sort of a private cloud, we're absolutely there. Most right. of our customers are doing that today, yeah. and there's also some smaller service providers that are offering more of a, a, a public cloud for Equalogic, right. uh, using Equalogic as well, uh, and some internal Dell groups are, are doing yeah, the same. Some I was talking to some guys from one of the internal Dell groups about how they're. You know, They've got the, you've got a big Dell on Dell sort of philosophy mm -hmm, here, mm -hmm. and how they you know they, they drink their own Kool Aid. So, so tell me what's going on there. Um, specific on cloud, I, I can't say much. No, but in, but in terms of Dell using Equalogic technology internally, well, well, if, if you look at for example, you know we acquired Perot. Yeah. And Perot. Um, that was actually your largest acquisition, it was right? Our largest acquisition, um, exactly. So. so when you, when you look at what they're trying to do from the services side in the cloud, you can imagine that we're working closely together with them to make sure that the Equalogic technology plays into the cloud mm -hmm. solutions. So we're spending a lot of time with them making sure that as they go out, they're taking the Equalogic And Dell's, with Dell Data Center Services, um, are you working with that group? Well, well, our internal, well, a good example is IT. Our internal IT groups run all of our exchange uh -huh. on Equalogic That's today. Right. So you still haven't put your email in the cloud. You're still using Exchange, huh? We're still, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're waiting. I don't know about your, you, we can put your email in the cloud if you want. We're not ready to put ours there yet, I guess. Uh, yeah, well, uh, yeah, mine went down the other day, but it's but I'm in the cloud. Um, no. uh, but I didn't lose anything, I don't yeah, think. I, I think, you know, Travis kind of alluded to this when he said, well, define the cloud, right? Yeah. There's 
there's the public cloud, right. there's private clouds, there's infrastructure providers to the cloud. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to see a lot of the technology that's already there being utilized for clouds, and it's going to be interesting to see. If you remember storage as a service about, what, 10 years ago? I do ago, remember storage as a service. That, it's sort kind of, of back a little yeah, bit. Yeah, well, know, it kind of went out because it did the, go. The, the economics didn't work out. Right, but, it is, but, it, but now we've got lots of... Active. We've got obviously got Amazon yes. S3. That's right. Right. We we've got companies like uh, Nirvanix, mm -hmm. right, who are, are building out a storage infrastructure as a service. So, right. what's your take on that? You well, I, think, it. I think it's going to keep growing. Yeah. And as you know, our our data center solutions team. You know, you, you quoted the number earlier. How yeah, many, yeah. The, our team was a, is a big provider to them, on, mainly on the server side, right? Yeah. And we're going to be jumping in with uh, on the storage side as well. Well, that's great. Travis, nice to nice to meet you, Pete. Yeah. Good to reconnect. Yeah, good to see we're, you again. We're uh, we're gonna we've got another.